Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. We're glad to have you joining us here in person as well as those of you who are joining us online. We are glad to have you with us today on this first Sunday of March, second Sunday in Lent. I'd like to invite Olivia to come forward to lead us in our call to worship this morning. Okay, you guys can stand if you'd like, otherwise you can stay seated. <laughs> yeah, actually jump. I want you to jump while we do this. <laughs> um, okay. Holy and merciful one, in this season of discernment, we come bring our deepest longings and our failed attempts at satisfying them. We have often looked for love, for acceptance and security, in formulas that will assure success at the expense of staying tuned into the spirit's nudging. We yearn for lives that matter. We desire relationships that thrive. We want less than regret. At times, we fail to see that you have already given us what really matters, your love and acceptance. You provide opportunities all around us to make a difference in the lives of others. You give us a fresh start each day, inviting us to do better. We may look for the signs of the helper in our lives. Let you, O oh God, are ever present, ever loving, and ever encouraging us to extend that love to others. In all things, may we find assurance in the world's words of the psalmist. The Lord will keep your life you're going out and you're coming in from this time on and forevermore. May we open our hearts, our minds, our souls, our vision to the ways of love created by God, embodied in Jesus, and already moving us by the Spirit. We have forgiven, loved, and grieved. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning comes from the hymnal number 617, I Come With Joy, and the words will also be up on the screen.
You may be seated. I'd like to invite the young and the young at heart to join me up here at our Scrabble board. If you want a close up look at the Scrabble board, you got to come close up. Well, good morning. How is everybody doing today? Is everybody good? Maybe a little tired? Anybody tired? Oh, there's a few tired folks out there. It's not just me, that's good. So we have our Scrabble board again this week, and I've already got some words up there, so I'm gonna ask, would you like to read them for us? Okay, I'm gonna uncover them. Let me get them all straight now. There we go. Can you tell me what it says? Go down and then go across. What does this one say? Help others. Help others. Help others. So last week we talked about resisting evil. This week we're talking about helping others. So what are some ways that we can help others? Who has some ideas on how we can help others? Yeah, touch base with the homeless and see how they're doing, how their week is going. What else can we do to help others? Take somebody a meal, that's helpful. Make someone cookies, that's also a good way to help others. Just like, yummy chocolate bars. <laughs> yummy chocolate bars do help a lot of people, I will agree with that. <laughs> that's true, anybody else have any other ways that we help others? Pray for them. Just listening. Just listening. What about if you look at somebody and you go like this? Do you think a smile helps others? I bet that helps a lot of people too. <clears throat> if you're not feeling so great and someone smiles at you, it might make your day a little bit better. So that's another way we can help others. So God, in our story today, we're gonna learn about God being our helper. So how does God help us? Can, gives us strength. How else does God help us? Watches out for us. That's another way God helps us. Does God bring people into our lives as a way of helping us? Definitely, I think that's true. So there's lots of ways that God helps us. So we're gonna learn, listen to some story, scripture about God helping us and how God asks us to help others. And now we're gonna put our, we're gonna move God, we're gonna move help others over to the side just a little bit. I'll try not to mess it up too much. And we're gonna put, our, our special one up that was up last week too. Oh, 
I went there, I went this way instead. That's okay. I think it'll still work. This time we're going to read this way and then down. What does it say? Love God. And when we help others, what are we doing? We're loving God. So that's what we're called to do. Will you please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for loving us and helping us. May we also love others and help others in your name. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats. I'll just let you come right on up, Olivia. You're ready. The scripture today is Psalm 121 and John 3, 11 through 17. <clears throat> it is a song of ascents. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at the right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He watches over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. This is now John three eleven through 17. Very truthfully, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Thank you, Olivia. Blessings this morning to the beloved people of God. Today marks the second week of Lent. Together, we're looking for love in our lives and throughout our community, as well as looking at scriptures and stories of Jesus that point us to images of where love and grace and forgiveness and righteousness and healing can really be found which is sometimes not where we expect it to be. At times, culture and society lead us to believe that we must do something special to earn love to, and to do something worthy of acceptance. So we work, work, work to get approval and to feel like our life is justified, thinking that by doing so, we will be good enough to receive God's love and good enough to love others, and good enough to be loved by others. However, as we heard in our scriptures today, God's love is not something that we can earn, but God's love is always present, an always present helper in our lives. God is a giver of unconditional love. Both the psalmist and Jesus remind us that our help comes from God, that our strength comes from God. And Jesus also reminds us that it is not about always doing the right thing or being perfect, but it's about allowing the Spirit to help bring forth love in our lives to guide us into loving others. 
Today, let us remember that God is a helper in our lives, and we too are called to be helpers in the lives of those around us. Please pray with me. Loving and guiding God in all that we say and in all that we do and in everywhere that we go. Let us put our faith and our trust in you. In our times of trouble, may we seek your help, seek your love, and seek your grace. And likewise, when we see others in trouble, may we be your representatives, your helpers in their lives. May we be open to seeing and experiencing what is possible for us and for all of creation. And may we be open to seeing and experiencing your unconditional love and grace more fully. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. I lift my eyes up to the hills. From where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. These opening lines of Psalm 121 are ones that speak to the very depths of my soul. Living near the foothills of Colorado, these words have an even deeper meaning to my life. Can anybody else relate to what it means to look out at those hills and to know that God created those and created each and every one of us? I love that as soon as I start heading west towards the church, I'm greeted with the great expanse of the Rocky Mountains, juxtaposed with the jagged edges of the flat irons around Boulder. The colors and the lighting change from day to day, and sometimes they even change from morning to afternoon. I'm struck by the beauty on a clear blue sky as well as the cloudy, foggy days and everything in between. Even as a Colorado native, I am simply never, ever, I will never, ever tire of this view and the majesty of it all. The mountains remind me of God's closeness and God's presence with us here on earth. They remind me that God is only a prayer or a thought away. I simply cannot look up at the hills or the mountains and not sense the awesomeness of God surrounding me, guiding me. This varying beauty and massive landscape of the Front Range also reminds us of the depth and the expanse of God's love and God's compassion for each of us. It's deeper and fuller than anything we could ever anticipate or imagine. And even more than that, is the intensity and the depth of God's love and care for each of us. The psalmist reminds us that our help comes from beyond what we can see, from beyond what we can understand, from beyond what we can even explain. The words of the psalmist remind us that there is nothing we are meant to do on our own. That when we find ourselves in a situation when we need help, we can always call out to God for God will always be there when we need him the most. Whether we are struggling physically or spiritually, God is there to journey alongside us, to be our helper. The question of where our help comes from is a natural one, and hopefully the answer is too. The journey can be a physical one or a spiritual one, and this question of where our help comes from reminds us that our help comes from God. Throughout our life, we will experience ups and downs, and we will continue to seek the greatest of gifts from God. We will continue to seek God's help each and every day. Each and every day, God is with us in the highs and the lows of life, in the ups and the downs of life. Each of us can be impacted physically through diseases, through injuries, through accidents, through war, through natural disasters. We can be impacted economically through recessions and depressions and unemployment and outsourcing and downsizing and debt. And we can be impacted spiritually through doubt, 
through sin, through corruption, through false teachings. And all of these things make that question and the response to that question, where does my help come from, even more important to ask and to answer. Whenever I think about God as the helper and of the many people who are helpers in my life and throughout all the world on behalf of God, these wise words shared by Mr. Rogers come to mind. He says, when I was a boy and I would, be, and see, I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. To this day, especially in times of disaster, I remember my mother's words, and I'm always comforted by realizing that there are still so many helpers, so many caring people in the world. And I think that's true, and it's a reminder that there is always somebody helping, and God is working through those helpers in our community and in our lives. As I think of this question in my own life, I'm reminded of a number of times when I've had to lean on God, when I've had to seek God's help in my life, when I've had to ask God to help me out, because I couldn't do it on my own. One specific time comes to mind from about 11 years ago. Like many parents and church workers and anybody who lives on this planet, at some point, sometimes we push ourselves to the point of exhaustion. I'd been working long hours in preparation for a weekend youth retreat, and then when we got there, there wasn't much time to rest because then we had to do all the things that we had planned for this youth retreat. The weekend went well. We made it back and forth on this super snowy road from Casper, Wyoming. But then a few days after I returned, I began to feel like I was coming down with something. I tried to fight it with rest, but I couldn't shake it. Then a few more days passed and it became clear that things were not getting any better. They were only getting worse and that I was in need of some serious medical help. It turns out that I had a horrible, very horrible case of pneumonia. And as a result, my body was actually going into sepsis. I spent two weeks in the hospital. The first two days being in the ICU, I don't remember them, but Jason does. Many people prayed for me. Many people helped take care of my little kids and my family and the running of the house in my absence. Many, many people served as God's hand and feet during those two weeks I was in the hospital and the several months of recovery when I got back home. God was there. God was working through those people, answering that question, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. I'm also reminded of my call to ministry when I think about these words, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. From the moment I first felt called as a senior in high school in 1994, to the moment I finally answered my call into ministry, as a young mom in 2013, to the moment I received my MDiv in 2016, and to the moment I was ordained as United Methodist Elder in 2019. God had been guiding me and helping me along this long journey. For that 20 plus years, God was by my side, helping prepare me, helping to see, me to see what was possible helping to rem me to remember that I am never, ever alone. God was by my side, as was my family and my friends and my colleagues and my mentors in ministry. My help did indeed come from the Lord and from the people whom God placed on that journey. Our gospel reading today highlights not only God's presence in our lives, but even more so God's unconditional love for each and every one of us. It includes a very familiar, often quoted verse, John 3:16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes may not perish but may have eternal life. And a lot of times we stop there but we miss out on part of the story when we don't read John 3, 17. 
They go out, go on to say, indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Jesus didn't come to say you are doing things wrong. Jesus came to bring light and love and joy into this world. Jesus came to be in relationship with people, to make connections with one another. Jesus came into the world as love and calls for us to love. And that's what the scripture reminds us. In the scripture, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, a Jewish leader who thinks he knows everything about Jesus, knows why Jesus is there, knows who Jesus is, knows what Jesus is going to do, because he's watched him, he's heard about him, so he knows. And Jesus reminds him that faith isn't in the knowing, it's in the seeing and the feeling with our spirit and with our hearts. He calls for Nicodemus to see with the spirit of its, the eyes of the spirit, to have faith. For us to see the world with the open, welcoming, loving eyes of the spirit is what God calls us to do. As followers of Jesus, we are called to extend God's love to all people, no matter what. In God's beloved community, all are welcome. Welcome whether we agree or disagree. Welcome whether our life circumstances align or not. Welcome whether, our, whether we think or believe the same way. Welcome, no matter what. As I reflect back on my own stories, I shared about experiencing God's help in my life. They are examples also of having faith in God's faithfulness to me. I know that for me, when I am at my lowest, God is often at God's best. When I feel I can no, go no farther, God is often there leading me on one step at a time. When I feel overwhelmed, God brings me a sense of calm. Now, this doesn't mean that God fixes everything and makes everything perfect. That would be a lie, and that is not what I'm saying. But it is that God is with us through the parts that are struggling, through the troubled times, through the things that stress us out. God is with us. So I encourage you to take some time to think back and reflect on times in your life when God was a helper, as well as on the people whom God called on to be God's helper in your life. May you also reflect on times when God has called on you to be a helper for someone else. As we continue our Lenten journey, may we strive to have faith in God's faithfulness to us, and may we also strive to seek out ways to be the hands and the feet of Christ to others by being God's helper to those in need. Indeed, being made in the image of God, we are called, called to be helpers as one of the ways that we embody love in the world. Amen. I'd like to invite you to a time of prayer, to be with God, reflecting on how God is working in your life. And then we will pray the Lord's Prayer together.
Lord, we're grateful for how you are in our lives, how you walk alongside us and offer your care <clears throat> and compassion and love to us. May we be like you and offer that care and compassion to our neighbors as well, Lord. And Lord, when we don't know what to say, may we remember those words that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward to collect our morning gifts and offerings. to do your work here in our community and beyond. We offer these gifts to you. Amen. You may be seated. We come now to a time to share in the Holy Communion. If you did not receive your elements when you came in, raise your hand and we will get them to you. Janet will come around, so have your hand up and she will bring you what you need. <laughs> and those of you joining us at home, if you find a piece of bread or some juice, she's went to go get some more, she ran out of the, she'll be out in just a second. Some bread and some juice at your house that you can also share in this meal with us as well. So we'll wait just a minute. We'll get you all your communion elements. Okay, now raise your hands again. She's ready. <laughs> All right. When we share in communion, we are reminded of our connection to Christ and our connection to our siblings in Christ all over the world. And so we share in this meal as a way to remind us of our connection and to remind us of who Jesus is in our lives. 
So Jesus, when he gathered with his friends in that upper room, they were sharing a meal, a common meal that they would share together. And when they sat down, Jesus took that bread that was on the table. He broke the bread. He gave thanks and he offered it to his friends gathered and offers it to us still today and said, this is my body broken for you. Every time that you eat of this, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, gave thanks, and that this is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Every time that you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts, we offer all honor and glory to you, almighty God. May this meal nourish us, strengthen us, and remind us of who you are in our lives. We give you thanks, almighty God. Amen. I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able and join in our closing hymn, number 354, I Surrender All.
Lord, we go from this place loved and called by you. May we go into our world, into this world that we live in, and be your helper, your hands and feet in our community, in our neighborhoods, in our families, and even, Lord, may we seek your guidance in all that we do. We are grateful for how you help us. May we help others too. Amen. You may be seated.